if you're ever interested in videos on Japan that are not available. Blah, blah, blah. So awesome. This video is brought to you by all my Patreon supporters. Go team off. Your coastal peeps, it's Oz. So I get many messages on my Instagram and YouTube asking me, how do I become an ALT? And there's many videos on YouTube talking about how to become an ALT or how to get to Japan to teach English, but there's not many on how to actually do the job as an ALT. So today I'm gonna tell you how to act, dress, talk, and be to be a good ALT. But before I begin, if you're interested in videos about Japan that are not available on YouTube or articles that are about the darker side of Japan, then definitely subscribe to my free newsletter. I send it out once a month, so if you're interested, the link is in the description below. So let's talk about being an ALT. ALT stands for Assistant Language Teacher. So in junior high schools and high schools across Japan, there are actually Japanese teachers who teach English. But the Board of Education also provides foreigners like me who are native English speakers to be an assistant. Our job is to assist the Japanese teacher teaching English and to bring more of a natural English life to the classroom. Hence, we deal with more of the speaking, the listening, and the actual using of English. The Japanese teacher deals more with the grammar, the reading, and the writing of English. Let's start with dress code. This is how the principals and the office staff usually dress at the school. This is how teachers dress at most schools. This is how we are supposed to dress at the school. And usually this is the way we actually dress at the school. Each school and city is different, so to be on the safe side, I would say dress business casual. Suit pants or khaki types of pants with a collared shirt. Ties and jackets aren't really necessary, except on special occasions. On your first day of school, you'll probably have to wear a suit because it's the opening ceremony and the school will be introducing you to the students. Similarly, with graduation, you'll be wearing a suit. But as the weeks and the months go by, you'll notice that most teachers dress like they're going jogging. Everyone's in a tracksuit. So I tend to dress down a little bit more, but not as casual as the teachers. I still wear a suit or khaki pants, but I usually wear a long sleeve shirt with no collar or a polo shirt with a collar. But like I said, it depends on what the school does, so maybe you can ask a Japanese teacher and see what they recommend. If you have tattoos or earrings, definitely take off the earrings and hide the tattoos when you're in the school. Also, don't talk about having either to the teachers or the students, just in case. Also, a lot of schools complain that ALTs have a strong perfume or cologne, so maybe lay off that until the weekend when you're actually pimping. When you come to work, it's a good idea to walk to the, the front where the principal, vice principal are sitting and bow and say ohayou gozaimasu and onegaishimasu. Ohayou gozaimasu, onegaishimasu. And as you walk around and see all the teachers, you should also greet them with either ohayou gozaimasu or even in English, good morning. Working as an ALT, you'll be probably getting a weekly, a monthly, or even a yearly schedule to let you know what classes you'll be teaching and which teachers you'll be paired up with. Depending on how big the school is, there might be only one English teacher for the entire school, or one for each level, each grade, or even just a whole bunch of teachers that teach different levels. In the school I worked at last year, I had six English teachers. But in a smaller school, you might have only one or two. As an ALT, before you go into the class, you should know what lesson plan you're doing, so you should know what page you're doing, what unit you're doing, and if possible, try to have a meeting either before the class or the day before if that's possible. I know you would think that since you're supporting an English teacher, you would have hours to meet together, to plan the lesson, to uh, prepare activities together. But in reality, sometimes you only get two minutes to talk to the English teacher before going into the classroom. There are set lesson plans and curriculum, so as long as you follow that, you should be okay. But what I recommend is once you know what lesson you're doing, try to on your own find an activity online as a backup just in case. Sometimes teachers will have an activity planned or sometimes they'll tell you way in advance to plan an activity or a game, so that's fine. But sometimes they'll just spring it on you like a minute before the lesson and ask you, hey, we have 15 extra minutes, can you do an activity? And if you haven't had anything planned, that might be hard, especially if you're a new ALT. I just Google search uh, ALT games. I think some of the most popular websites are AltWiki and Altopedia, so just, um, those websites usually have games and activity ideas based on the grade level as well as on the book that you're using. If you're going to be an ALT at an elementary school, it's a completely different ballgame. There is no English teacher there. You are pretty much the English teacher and uh, you are paired with the homeroom teacher. And although the homeroom teacher is technically the, the lead English teacher, 99% um, of them don't speak a word of English, don't 
know what's going on, hardly ever read the lesson plan, and don't know how to speak English. So it's pretty much up to you to follow the curriculum and teach the lesson and try to involve the Japanese person, the homeroom teacher, as much as possible. Things like discipline or maybe explaining some of the more difficult parts of the lesson, you might want to try to get the Japanese teacher to do if they understand it themselves. For that reason, you pretty much have to treat the homeroom teacher as a student themselves and pretty much dumb down your English so that everyone in the class is uh, able to understand what you want to do. This is how you don't talk. All right, guys, so let's start the listening activity. Why don't you guys open your books to page 34? We're going to be actually taking all these people you see here, like Emily, Bob, Robert, and John. We're going to be matching them with the sport. So just take your pencil and, you know, match which sport they like, and then we'll check the answers after. Good luck. Instead, talk like this. Let's do the listening activity, listening time, okay? So first, please open your book to page 34, 34. 34. Okay. And everyone has a pencil. Good. Okay. So please look at these pictures. Emily, John, Robert, and Bob. Okay. Please take your pencil. Please listen. And please make a line to what sport do they like? What sport do you like? Please make a line. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. Let's start. Some schools require to eat lunch in the teacher's room. Others require you to go to the classrooms. I used to eat uh, lunch at schools in the classrooms. I'd rotate each day at a different class. And that was really fun. I get to sit with the students, talk to them, hang out, eat lunch. And it was pretty fun. It's just jokes. But um, because of Corona, they have stopped that now. I'm not sure if every school stopped that or just my area. And maybe it'll start up soon. But for now, I just eat at lunch in the teacher's room. But if you are lucky enough to eat uh, with the students, I would just suggest have fun. Don't force conversation. Don't try to be super funny or anything. Just kind of enjoy yourself. Listen to the kids talk. And if they have conversations with you, just talk to them. It's pretty fun. After lunch, most schools have a cleaning time. Here, students are put into groups and they're responsible for a different part of the school to clean. For the first couple of days, I didn't know what was going on, so I just walked around and just saw other people cleaning. But then I decided I like the library, so I'm just going to clean the library. So for the entire year, every day after lunch, I would go and wipe up and dust the library. The thing about cleaning is no one tells you to do it. No one says you have to do it. And no one even comes up to you and says, hey, can you help do this or help do that? They just assume that you know. And so if you don't clean and you just sit at the teacher's room by yourself, uh, no one's going to say anything to you, but it might come up in your review at the end of the year. And you'll be like, what? Why didn't anyone tell me? So I'm telling you now, if possible, just go and clean on your own. My elementary school is quite busy and out of the six periods of classes, I usually teach five. So I don't have much time. I have that one free period. I use that for planning lessons or doing photocopies or getting activities ready. But in junior and high school, it's a bit different. When you have free periods, sometimes you have entire days off where you have no classes. You can't just leave the school or you just can't go home. Officially, during these free periods, you should work. You should either um, ask one of your English teachers if they need any help or maybe um, ask another teacher or the vice principal or something if you can help with something or you can walk around and you can observe a different class or you can help with club activities or do something officially working at the school. Unofficially, most ALTs try to just stay invisible and quiet. Some ALTs read novels, others study Japanese, and others just do some research on the internet or prepare lessons or whatever. Basically stay busy. Don't watch YouTube videos or Netflix or use any kind of social media like Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok or whatever. Like I said, I don't have much free time, but if I do have a little small spare period and I've prepared all my lessons, I might do some research on Wikipedia or something like that. Something to do with maybe some ideas that I can do for YouTube. For example, my last video where I decided to do seven types of accommodations in Japan. If you haven't seen that, check that out. All right, so let's talk about the actual lesson and what you'll be doing at the lesson. Most likely, you'll be doing the introduction greeting. Good morning. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm happy. 
Oh, that's good. I'm happy. Good job. All right. And let's look outside. How's the weather? It's sunny. Yes, it's sunny. It's a good day. And today, what day is it today? It's Friday. It's Friday. Yay. Good job. What's the date? It's March 14th. Good job. Let's start the lesson. And then the Japanese teacher takes over. They usually teach the grammar or the vocabulary. And in that time, you can either go in the back of the room and kind of watch while they're doing that or stand on the side. I don't recommend sitting down or just relaxing. I just stand on the side and I have like my notebook and I'm preparing, I'm pretending to write notes to make it look like I'm busy. During the dialogue, you'll be expected to uh, say the dialogue and the students repeat it and possibly um, go in pairs and try to do some kind of dialogue practice. There might be a listening section and uh, there might be a CD or, or something on the computer that has the listening or the teacher might ask you to do the listening using your voice. So um, with that, you would just either follow along with the, with the script or read the script slowly and uh, check the answers and that should be pretty simple. The activity is, I guess, the main part where you're useful, whether the teacher provided the activity or you provided the activity or it's in the curriculum in the book. The activity is usually done by the ALT and the Japanese teacher together. They role play it, they demonstrate it, and then they pass it off to the kids and then the kids do the activity. During that role playing part, of course, you're going to be involved and the actual activity, if the kids are in pairs or in groups doing it, just walk around and make sure everyone's speaking English and having fun and everything's going smoothly and you should be fine. And with the goodbye, same thing, you just say goodbye to the class and it's pretty simple. Leaving the school is also very simple, pretty much same as when you came in, just say goodbye to everybody in English is okay, and when you leave, maybe say osaki ni shitsureshimasu, which means uh, sorry for leaving before you. Otsukarasama deshita, otsukarasama deshita, osaki ni shitsureshimasu, see you, thank you. And now I'm just going to tell you some tips that you should know um, if you want your ALT life to be very smooth. Don't try any kind of disciplining. It's definitely not your job. It's either the Japanese teacher's job or any other staff's job to deal with kids that are acting up or whatever. Um, I know it gets frustrating and even if, especially if the Japanese teacher is not controlling the class and you're trying to speak and people are speaking over you or screaming or not listening or sleeping. Um, it sounds like you should try to stop them or try to make the class more in control but it, definitely it's not your job and it'll only make your life worse. For example, when I was in ALT in Hokkaido, uh, there was one student who was kind of bullying another kid. He started punching him and then when the Japanese teacher tried to stop him, uh, she, he pushed her against the wall and left into the hallway and then they started fighting the two boys and I went and pulled one of the boys away and kind of kept him away while the other people could take the other boy away. And I thought, okay, good, we did a good job. Me and the teacher helped stop the kids fighting. Later on, I had to go to explain myself to the principal and whatever. And they basically told me, oh, the kids weren't really fighting. They were just playing around and you don't speak Japanese, so you probably didn't understand. And I already, kn I knew enough Japanese, but even if I didn't know Japanese, I could tell that a guy being punched in the face repeatedly is not playing around. And the teacher being pushed was also not fun in games either. But that's just the way it is, so it's better to just stay out of it. Also, don't expect too much. I know that sounds bad or like a defeatist attitude, but literally you're just an ALT, you're just an assistant, and you're not going to be able to change the school or the rules of schools in Japan. I would just follow the main Japanese teacher, whether that teacher is competent or not, and then just let it go. Don't try to be the star teacher. Another thing is to be proud of being a foreigner. Don't try to act super Japanese or if you speak Japanese, don't try to show how fluent you are. The more foreigner you are, the more appealing you are to that school. You've been hired to show the students and the teachers a different style, a different culture, a different type of person than that is Japanese. Don't skip any classes and don't ever be late because it'll look really badly on you. And I think the final rule is don't take things too seriously. All teachers and students will have their good days and bad days. Just make life simple and enjoy the classes with the students. Don't blame yourself and just go with the flow. You'll notice that if you relax and you don't take things too seriously, 
um, both the teachers and students are much more fun and funny. Anyway, that's my experience and that's how I've been conducting myself in the years that I've been ALT and I've had a really good experience. Hopefully this video will help people who are ALTs already and are having kind of trouble at their school, as well as new people who are planning to become ALTs. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. To support me even more, you can subscribe to my free newsletter or you can support me on Patreon where for as little as a dollar a month, you can get videos that are not available on YouTube. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace. This is my dog smiling. When I pet him, he smiles even more. Good boy. <laughs> Hello. He looks so happy. I know dogs really can't smile, but doesn't it actually look like he smiles when I touch him? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy.